the left up you can see cpu information it tells you the flex and literally describes in what state the cpu is you can see also program counter some registers what are supported in this particular model you can see memory view it's even listed to 4020 so you can see what's in the cartridge fetch decode execute and that's about it for today so thank you for watching and see you next time okay okay we are going to add a few details to it let me clarify from the start the terms cpu microprocessor processing unit or processor they are not complete synonymous but i'm going to use them as such there are differences but nowadays plenty of people and even professionals use them interchangeably if you really want you can drop a comment and we can make a video about what they really mean and what these devices are how they differ but for now let's keep it basic let's keep it simple i'm gonna use all of these terms maybe <laughs> during this video they all mean same thing cpu what even is cpu you probably saw it at least on a picture nowadays it's a square usually grayish with plenty of golden pins on the bottom let's start with the picture what i promised you last time to use again that's for neumann architecture you can see that the cpu is composed of different parts arithmetic logic unit and control unit the arithmetic part is there for addition subtraction things like that the logic is there for or and nand not binary operations control unit this is the place where the magic happens it tells you what instruction is going to run next what's gonna happen and what will be the flow of the data processing we also have more things there especially in modern processors such as registers small pieces of memory accessible to the cpu they are very fast and they have crucial role in overall working of your computer there can be also cache specific memory but let's keep it basic for today what is very important to mention talking about cpu is instruction set this is something what we talk about in episode about languages the processor has some supported set of commands which are hardwired into it you might ask your processor to execute instruction jump on this input data this address if necessary and just output you something output you the result this is what the pins are for you are sending the inputs there waiting for computations to happen and through the different pins you are going to receive your answer and when we are talking about instruction set there are two different approaches there are sysc and risk six meaning complex instruction set computing whereas risk means reduced instruction set computing both of them have different philosophy behind risk architecture is about faster and simpler instructions they are designed to be processed within one clock within one tick and this approach has several advantages the execution of them is faster because really it's just one tick the hardware behind is more understandable more straightforward it might also lead to lower power consumption because it's not necessary to be complicated however there are also disadvantages as you might guess if the instructions are very simple it takes many of them to do some more complex task so the code can be longer it means you need more memory also that's a little bit technical but the compilers for this type of processor must be very good you as a developer want to write something complex and the compiler should be able to decompose small and simple parts this might be tricky because of the power efficiency this is a common architecture for arm processors you probably have them in your cell phone tablet mobile devices in general in the other hand we have cisc complex it means they are very versatile you can use a single instruction or single command to do plenty of things they are not necessarily designed to be one instruction one clock cycle good thing is that they are more memory efficient because you don't need that many commands to do the same thing among these advantages definitely is that they might be a little bit slower when it comes to let's say execution of the instruction because they are more complex so you need more time for them but in the other hand if well balanced this longer execution is able to process more data or in more sophisticated way so it might be not a big deal in the end obviously contrary to the risk microprocessor there is higher power consumption and among technical details they might be harder to optimize and you need more complex hardware so how do cpu works fetch decode execute remember this and you are fine 
Fetch means fetch next instruction from the memory. This is the piece of code which is going to be processed and executed. Whatever you're gonna fetch is some number. And in the decode part, the processor should understand what this number represents in different language, what this number symbolizes as an operation. And when the CPU understands that, it should execute the operation. And that's it. In the end of the video, I show you how it works on a real life example. The cycles, how the CPU works, are driven by the CPU clock. And the clock speed is measured in Hertz. Nowadays, typically gigahertz. This number tells you how many cycles CPU can perform within a second. And higher number means I'm able to execute more operations. Talking about performance, you should also consider how many cores your CPU has. Imagine core as independent unit. So the more cores you have, the more parallel tasks you are able to run at the same time. You frequently need software optimized for that, but of course operating system can help. Nowadays it's not usually a problem, like developers are very aware. Also cache memory can play a role and its respective size. You probably also heard about the 32-bit processor and 64-bit processor. So what, what are these? x86 is how it started, let's say, talking about modern times. The name x86 is derived from the processor 8086. It was introduced in 1978 and had 16 bits. And yes, it is a little bit convoluted. Later on, new versions came, 8386 and 8486. Computers based on them were very common when I was a child. We even called them 386 and 486 in Czech language. And these were also x86, but not 16 bits, but already 32 bits. Around the year 2000, 2003, AMD introduced new extension, x64. And now the naming started to make sense. If we say that a processor has 32 bits or 64 bits, what is the difference? It tells you how big chunks of data the processor can process in the same time. Probably the most important implication is how much of a memory the processor can address. If you think about 32 bits, we can compute 2 to exponent 32, and we are going to get this. We can divide it by 1 million to have information in megabytes, and you can see it's about 4,000. So the 32-bit processor can address 4 gigabytes of memory at the top. Ten years ago, it was unimaginable. There was something absolutely from the fairy tale world. You know, our first computer, I can't even remember how much memory it had. I can imagine a few megabytes. The hard drive of it was about 60 megabytes. So 64-bit processor can address two up to 64, and that's, that's plenty. It should be enough for a few more years. The CPU communicates with other components uh, through bus. Uh, that's something what you might see on the motherboard. They are just wires, and uh, you can see these thick blocks of wires coming from one component to the other. I guess that was about it. So let me show you a practical example of one processor and its implementation. You know, I'm a big fan of retro gaming, so let's talk about Nintendo Entertainment System. NES had processor 2A03. What we are going to describe is processor 6502, which is the one 2A03 is built upon. You can see here in the code, processor communicates with the peripherals through the bus and via sending data to different places, or also accessing them. For instance, you can see that the address 4020 or 4020, is where cartridge starts. So if you put a cartridge into your device and processor needs to touch it, this is the address range. What do we have here are flags. The flags are stored as one register and because the microprocessor is 8-bit, we can have up to eight of them. Flag is something which can be zero or one. And you can combine all of them to one byte and use it as a one register. I can simply ask for the third bit to access the particular value or the particular feature of the processor, or let's say state, the particular state the processor is in. I can see definition of instructions, where the opcode, that means nothing to the processor, the processor doesn't know what is ADD, what is JMP, it's just the number, but it's good as written here for the debug purposes. Also some operation, what should happen and how many cycles it takes. Here we can see the part where the simulator fetch the instruction, decode it and execute it based on the operation which is attached to it. I didn't write the simulation down to the wires. It would be a little bit too much. I described the instructions in normal high level language. What you can see above is program counter. Program counter tells you what instruction is going to be run next. A little bit obsolete word nowadays. We are actually using instruction pointer. And if you remember from the last episode, I showed you register RIP, which means register instruction pointer. 
and this program counter, that's basically the same thing, just more than a word. And in case of 6502, it has 8 bits. In case of x64 architecture, it has 64 bits. And why I, why I actually even implemented this CPU is because I wanted to implement my own simulation of NES. It's written based on the work of JVIT X9, one long coder, and it's far from finished, but it's already doing something, if you wanna check. As a last thing, let me show you this debug view. The left up, you can see CPU information. It tells you the flex and literally describes in what state the CPU is. You can see also program counter, some registers what are supported in this particular model. You can see memory view. It's even listed to 4020. So you can see what's in the cartridge. The left bottom window, you can see this assembly. I'm taking the byte, which is in the particular step of the memory, which is supposed to be run, and I'm decoding the number, the hexadecimal value, to the instruction, based on the instruction set, which is supported by the microprocessor, by the CPU. There is also pattern table upright, but uh, this is specific to the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's nothing we should talk about right now. That will be all for today, so I hope you learned something. Thanks you for watching, and see you next time.